Hello guys, Discord here and welcome back to Building the Bakes Bergen. In the last episode we left off at the Congo Square area and as you can see the water is currently out. But yeah, we built the lemur islands and all sorts of other things. I should probably pause the game before the lemurs actually walk off the islands. <laughs> they already are by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, we built the Congo Square area and today we are going to be moving on beyond that and we are going to work on the red panda and the sloth bear habitat now recently we've been kind of doing um finished build tour videos on the channel for these episodes um, but in the past we actually used to do uh, progress update type videos and i kind of want to bring that back a little bit because uh, i think it's actually a lot more interesting to look at the entire process of building and not just the finished product you can see the finished product yourself when you download the zoo after the episode comes out so uh, that's why i kind of want to take you guys through the process of building this habitat you can already see the process of building the red panda habitat on my channel because uh, everything that is currently here um, was built on a live stream on the international red panda day of 2020 and that is actually pretty much exactly half a year ago so uh, yeah it took us a while to get back to it but here we are uh, ready to complete it so um there is however one little hiccup so last night i have started work on the sloth bear habitat this is my little reference grid over here you can see that same grid and i've been kind of drawing out the edges of the habitat uh, so that's what we've got going on over here um let me just quickly get rid of the grid for a moment so we can kind of tell what's going on so we've got a little moat over here there's going to be a little waterfall uh, this drop is actually supposed to be much smaller than it is in here but of course in the game uh, the water levels have to be one meter apart but yeah this is um, kind of a difficult build because we're dealing with water terrain and pretty soon there i am going to try to get some pathing out here probably won't be able to do it out here um, i've already had to make this out of the temple pieces instead of actual terrain it blends pretty well uh, the temple pieces have all of these kind of spots that kind of look like all the pebbles on the natural uh, terrain that i usually use but um the problem <laughs> that uh, we've encountered if i just get the grid back uh, is that the red panda habitat i mean i just told you it was built half a year ago and i think back then i didn't have a very good uh, reference photo of the entire zoo from Google Maps quite yet because I hadn't found a uh, Google Maps customizer website that allows you to take high resolution screenshots of big areas of Google Maps. So what I mean by that is that this layer over here, yeah, you can already see it. This layer over here is my new reference photo, uh, whereas what you can see underneath uh, is what I not really exactly what I used to use. I had a, a bit more advanced, but um, what I used to use was kind of stitched together images from Google Maps that I manually stitched together. Well, this is stitched together by the computer, so obviously a lot more precise. Um, the resulting problem is that the areas over here kind of shifted a little bit when I got a better picture in. So what that means at the moment is that the red panda habitat is exactly four meters off it's four meters too high so i'm going to try to blueprint it and move it back four meters and uh, hopefully that will work out with all the terrain and such because it would be a shame if we had to redo everything <laughs> All right, so sometime later, we finally have the entire shape of the moat in correctly. So we have a kind of double concrete moat going throughout here. And on this side, uh, one side of the moat is just some rock work. So we'll get to that later. But now that I have the entire shape correct, I can finally get to actually building some stuff. So we're going to try to terraform in the... Uh, habitat to the right shape and then start working on all of these walls to make them look correctly and get some foliage behind here 
We also have this viewing area over here, which is just kind of a schematic at this point. It's just a placeholder uh, to test out how we're going to work with all of the windows and such, because uh, we are dealing with some difficulties. I want to put a little uh, electric wire, which actually looks really nice. Uh, I want to put that around the, uh, the moat, because that's the way it is. Um, I think it is to keep the bears and foxes away from the water. Uh, there is also some otters in this habitat, uh, although I think they are in here temporarily. I, I have no idea what they're doing here, but uh, I think normally in real life the otters kind of just climb underneath the fence because it's not this low normally. Uh, but yeah, um, that fence also creates some difficulties. I have glass barriers over here. Um, but on this side, I put in a black glass rectangle because I couldn't get the barrier next to this barrier. So that was kind of a difficulty, but um, we're getting there, we're getting there. So I've been building away and I just realized that I um, had my OBS on the wrong thing, possibly. So maybe there was no mouse in the previous recording, so I might fix something for that in editing or uh, something like that. But who knows, we'll see. Um, for now, uh, I have been building uh, over here mostly. We've got the walls kind of set up. Um, the most difficult thing about this was trying to get the color right. The real walls have this kind of orange, pinkish tint, and it's it's very like it changes very subtly when depending on the lighting. Uh, I, I just couldn't really tell what the color actually was. So I eventually decided that this is going to be it. And I hope it's good. I'm pretty happy with what it looks like. So I think it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so if we look around, we've got some of these patterns all over the walls over here. Even going around corners. I had to do some uh, trickery to get that right. Uh, we've got the little wire going all the way along that also needs to still go uh, along here and along here, I think. Um, and we have the starting of the terraforming and the post, what is going to be the bear bridge. <laughs> so over here, there's going to be a little staircase going up and there's going to be a climbing frame for kids that goes right along the top of the habitat here and uh, gives you some really awesome views of the bears. All right, I started doing some work on the visitor side of the area. Uh, so I put in some pathing already and we've got some of this rock work over here. I'm not 100% sure if I like the combination of regular and faux rocks, but I think it works pretty well. Um, and yeah, if we go up here, we also have some visitors standing on the path. I tried to kind of combine this sort of path with the natural path so that um, we don't have to worry about hiding these little um, curb thingies, uh, especially in this part where the path is basically just this. Um, we would have those curb things in the middle of nowhere and it would be no point in really hiding them. So that's why I went with a different path that doesn't necessarily have a curb. Um, but I did try to kind of hide it a little bit using some of the temple stone and faux rocks um, to make it look like it's mostly the same sandy texture. It looks a bit messy, but I think it's just about the best I can do uh, with what we're given here. I just wish we had a natural path without those little knobs. It would make my life so much easier, but oh well. A man can dream, I guess. Um, so yeah, I got some guests in here, so you can see the kind of the viewing area we got going on here. And I'm so happy that we've already finished all of the signs of the zoo in all of our sign streams, uh, because I can just plop them down, and bam, we already have something that looks really detailed because of the inclusion of the signs. So that's really cool. Um, so on the other, wait, what happened here? The concrete has disappeared. I guess I must have accidentally deleted that. Oh, I'm gonna have to go fix that. Well, um, I, I think I was about finished with showing stuff anyway, so let's get into doing that. All right, it seems like I recorded an entire section of the video with no audio. 
Uh, either my microphone must have been muted or something else happened. I did get a new microphone. I hope you notice. I'm not sure if you can. It's, the difference is a bit subtle, but it feels better to me. It's also a lot easier to edit with. Uh, anyway, uh, on the video right now, you can see a bunch of new stuff has been added, uh, including guests that are now able to walk up to uh, the viewing area. They also use the area down there, but whatever. Uh, oh, you, oh yeah, I put bears in in this clip. That's what I was showing. Um, yeah, they completely ignore the electric fence and just swim in the moat whenever they like, which is all the time, but whatever. Um, and beyond that, you can see a lot of detail has been added. Uh, there are rocks around the habitat. Oh yeah, there's some escape lemurs over there. Uh, just ignore that. There's rocks around the habitat. There's foliage. Uh, everything is kind of coming together. So um, I, I think that is really it. I'm not sure what else I'm showing in this clip, but uh, while I have this moment with you, uh, I want to quickly talk about something I for completely forgot to talk about during the actual recordings. And that is uh, the progress update type videos. How are you liking it? Uh, personally, for this video in particular, I kind of felt like there wasn't enough progress at the beginning, uh, but things are picking up quite fast now. You'll see in the uh, next couple of clips. I right, over here we are looking at the concrete tunnels. Of course, not usable by the bears, but they do look pretty cool. Um, and yeah, they've got all of those rocks and stuff around it. I'm, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, kind of a, an iconic bit of this habitat. Like without these things, it wouldn't have looked the same. Um, but yeah, how are you guys liking the, the progress reports? Uh, I would like to know, yeah, so I can keep improving on that in future videos. Um, I, I do really like the fact that you can kind of see the process that I go through and, and see how the habitat evolves and what I do, uh, in, in what order I do things and stuff. Um, but let me know what you think. Should I do bigger leaps in progress, maybe small leaps in progress? Did I explain things well enough or should I kind of dive into how I did things more. Let me know in comments and uh, I'll keep improving on that in future videos. Um, I, I uh, Oh, waterfall. <laughs> That's also a new thing. Yeah, really happy with how this one turned out. Just, uh, I, I ended up using the, um, the new waterfall object from the aquatic DLC because it just have, has much nicer particles than the um, yeah, the waterfall particle effects that we have. Uh, it's a lot slower flowing, uh, which, is, which is really nice. So I, I think that's, that's it for this clip. So I'm gonna cut it off here and I'll see you in the next one. All right, we have a whole bunch of progress. We're currently looking at the reflection of the bear bridge. <laughs> there it is. Oh my God, this was something to build. <laughs> this was quite something. Let's uh, go around and get to the entrance of the bear bridge. In fact, let's enter Tejit Cam. Oh boy, why is it so laggy today? All right, let's enter Tejit Cam and we'll actually uh, walk around. Now you can't actually walk on this place, which kind of sucks, but over here we are on some terrain. So uh, yeah, the bear habitat is now actually like 99% finished. All that's left to do is the backstage and the foliage around it. I'm probably going to save the backstage for when we do the panda habitat because they share the same backstage area. But yeah, over here we've got the entrance to the bear bridge. Uh, still a little bit of cleanup to do over here, but just ignore that for now. We're going to go up the stairs and I'm amazed that that cam is actually able to do this. I'm afraid that it will shoot us up to the roof at some point, but... Uh, there we go. Bam! <laughs> we shot inside. We are in the bear bridge. In real life, this is a rope bridge uh, that goes all the way around the habitat and just you get some amazing views of the bears from up here. Um, I actually... Oh, and he is going for a swim. I hate it that they still do that, but whatever. Uh, I could try to put elephant grass around, but that'll probably just mess everything up even more because of how limited on space they already are so i don't know i think i'm just gonna keep it the way it is um but yeah i actually have a video i think i recorded it over here 
Um, let me just jump into here. I think I recorded it over here. I have a video of the bears uh, playing with their little feeder ball over here, which was just an amazing thing to behold. And from a place like this, like you have the just, ah, oh, it, it's so cool. I love the bear bridge. It is amazing. So let's keep going. So at the top over here, we have these, um, uh, these are font hashtag pieces. Let me actually show you. So 2D font nodo hash. And uh, the reason they are there is because uh, in real life, this entire thing is not just a rope, which is also surrounded by a, a, a little black netting uh, to keep you from uh, putting your hand through or dropping stuff down. So yeah, that's why that is uh, there. And then over here, there's kind of a, a special little post in the middle. There's a little crate where you can sit on and kind of view the bears from there and as we keep going over here which is pretty nice you got a little view of the red panda habitat which of course is not finished yet but um, and then over here you come out go down these stairs and we've got the other little viewing area over here which also has gotten a bit of an upgrade so over here you can also see the bear bridge just like that it looks Stunning. I am so happy. And yeah, over here you always have amazing views of the bears as well. Uh, they they often come up over here. I actually have a couple of videos of that as well. Um, yeah, it's so cool. And I'm so happy with how this habitat has turned out already. Um, so yeah, all that's left to do for me is a little bit of cleanup over here. Let me actually <laughs> leave the cam. Um, a little bit of cleanup over there on that slide and stuff. And uh, put some foliage around the habitat over there and over here. And I also want to see if I can get the uh, this side of the road somewhat finished. Um, I'm not going to start the habitat that's over here quite yet. Uh, but I do want to get the viewing area of it done just so that we can actually get some pathing down here because um, I don't want to put down any pathing as long as I still need to terraform around here so yeah that is the plan I'll see you in a little bit uh, for the end of the episode all right I was just finishing things up by putting the water in and I thought I'd show you guys something cool that happened um, I don't know how I managed this but <laughs> over here, if I lower this piece of fence, I can actually go lower than the water it's keeping in. So that's actually great because this is exactly where we have this waterfall. So yeah, there is no glass visible for this waterfall. And you can actually just kind of imagine it flowing out over there. So that's really, really cool. Um, we still have water in here. There's a bear in there as well. All right, so I have finished everything up. So around the habitat, you can see all sorts of foliage. So let's actually just go through over here. Um, actually, I have to go even further back because there's some extra reeds and stuff around. So we got a bunch of rocks over here and then a bunch of reed and birch and saplings and what not behind there so uh, that goes all the way up to over here to the playground well i say playground it's just one slide but you get what i mean um and yeah just here the rocks kind of start to thin out a little bit and they kind of stop over here at this thing and then behind here we have a forest that is kind of the staff area it's, there's like a little staff road and whatnot for me it's currently all just temporary stuff um, we'll get to fixing that all up once we finish everything around here because uh, this staff area is just kind of in the middle of all of this so i kind of want to have all of these habitats uh, laid out there's actually only one habitat really and uh, that's the hyena habitat over here once that is in i have kind of a lay of the land from the visitor side and we can kind of imagine what the staff side looks like so getting back to over here um this side of the habitat is just a couple of bushes couple of rocks 
Um, and then there, you've got all of that stuff sorted out. Um, oh, I just realized I forgot to add one thing. Let me quickly do that. Okay, so where were we? Um, what I did, by the way, is I added all these little black um, hook thingies, <laughs> which uh, would in real life hold another electrical wire uh, going around the perimeter of the moat to make sure nothing climbs out. So yeah, uh, let's go around and have a look at the final habitat. So I did add a bunch of new things after all. I realized I hadn't added this couple of logs that were just sitting there in the middle. Um, and actually I think that is also, I didn't really add a bunch of stuff. Oh no, wait, I did add a couple of yellow flowers around. Just liven up the place a little and they are indeed there in real life when everything is in bloom, which is kind of what I'm going for. Um, so I didn't know if I said this already. Uh, so in real life, they do share their habitat with Corsac foxes and um, yeah, it's a Asian small clawed otters. Um, we have neither of those in game. What is happening over there? Oh, wait. Oh, that's why we were lagging, I guess. We were also sped up. Um, but yeah, I don't know what animals I'm going to use for the um, Corsac fox if I do end up putting something in there. Um, for the small clawed otters, I was planning to use uh, baby giant otters, um, but since dealing with babies is still impossible, I'm uh, not gonna do that quite yet. Uh, I'm keeping all the baby replacement animals uh, until the end of the project, where I will also be able to disable aging and breeding. But yeah, um, as we go around here, we have some new stuff. Um, I also have had to remove some stuff. Over here is actually a bit of an open spot where I often climb on and take some pictures of the Sitatunga that you can usually view from here. But uh, going back, there is a lot of foliage on this side. Here's the official viewing area for the Sitatunga. It's not completely finished, it's kind of a rough sketch. Um, I copied over a lot of these rocks, so I might want to do some custom ones instead. Um, there's also supposed to be a little feeder here that, where you can buy some food to feed fish that are often in the water around here. Um, sadly, we don't have anything like that in game. Um, but yeah, going through here, there's a whole bunch of new foliage. There's some moss, there's some grates. These grates, man, they are always just surrounded by pools of water. They don't, <laughs> they don't do a very good job at keeping the water out. But anyway, over here is another viewing area for the Sitatunga, as well as the African forest buffalo, which are usually around here. I mean, they have a huge space, so they're not always around, but usually when they are, they're somewhere around here, uh, which is also where I think they have a little feeding platform. So that's probably why. Um, but yeah, going along once again, more and more foliage. It's super lush out here. There's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> and it was really hard to get the path in here. You can still see some remaining things, which I probably will cover up eventually. Um, but yeah, the path is in here. It doesn't look like it because I've done a pretty good job at hiding it. But there is a path going through here, around there. There's a little knob of path over here so people can actually use a viewing area um same thing over no wait i actually did not end up putting a path in this viewing area because it was really close to the water and stuff so it was really difficult um so either i had a path in here and a lot of those things to hide which i didn't feel like or no path so i chose for no path uh, for that area. Over here I did make it work, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, uh, over here, once again, you can already see where I've hidden some of those path knobs. Uh, but yeah, we have a path going into here, so people can actually use this viewing area as well. We'll see in a bit if they actually do. Uh, and then over here we get to the not finished area, the walking, um, the walking safari continuation basically. Uh, so people who download the zoo can already walk all the way up to here before either having to go back or <laughs> just continuing along the unfinished stuff for a brief moment. I actually did put up a sign over here um, 
informing people about that. So past this point, the zoo is not entirely finished. There's a lot to see. So do check it out. Just know that eventually you either have to come back here or walk through the unfinished area, which you'll see by the signs. So uh, just to lure the people in here uh, and not scare them off. Uh, enjoy some of my favorite builds here. The tiger habitats, indoor croc and hippo. And uh, that is not a that is not a good sentence. I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> but yeah, just some extra information for people downloading the zoo. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this zoo ready for uploading. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna upload the zoo for you guys, and uh, that's gonna be it for this episode of Building the Beekse Bergen. In the next episode. Uh, we will be continuing on over here to the red panda habitat. So that is, of course, very exciting. Red pandas are my favorite animals. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, finishing off the habitat that we started half a year ago on International Red Panda Day. Um, and finally do the red pandas some justice. I mean, we are off to a great start with this habitat, but yeah. You can't really see it anymore. <laughs> it, it, it's going to take some work. All right, but that really was it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video, live stream, or whatever ends up coming next. Bye-bye.